So in a project that we're working on at Third and Grove right now, um, I did something that I think is maybe interesting. Uh, linting is one of those like controversial topics that uh, it can be a little bit touchy. Uh, some people like it, some people don't, some people vary into uh, strict linting. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, in this particular case, I wanted to create a workflow where our linting rules didn't get in the way of somebody doing some work. Uh, and so let me, let me show you how this works first, and then I'll get into explaining uh, kind of how to do it. So in this case, uh, I'm preparing my work. Uh, this, you know, home route is now going to become uh, something that involves a link. Um, Hmm. Okay, so we make our initial uh, commit. There, there's a couple of problems here um, that come up in our commit linting. Um, but I don't want that to get in the way of being able to like create a PR and push these changes up to GitHub. Um, so we can go ahead and do that. And I have a PR started for this. And right now with the changes that are in there, uh, as you can see just a second ago, it was, it was passing. Um, and so prior to pushing these changes up, could have passed this, but now we're running through um, what essentially is an, another set of linting rules. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, it runs this ESLint script. Um, and so it's the same ESLint rules, it just doesn't allow any warnings. And so if there's something that uh, I want to maintain consistency with in the repo, but I don't care if somebody you know, does this a million times while they're working through whatever uh, task they need to get done, um, th that's something that I might make a warning um, instead of uh, you know, something that I, I you know, want people to completely stay away from. So it's, it's a soft check, as you can see here. So these linting warnings, uh, nobody else is ever going to see these unless they're working on my branch while I'm working on um, whatever ticket or issue I'm working on. So we don't get that spillover of warnings uh, from you know, working very quickly through a process because as you'll see when this comes up, this not passing is going to block this from merging into master. So how do we set this up? Well, we created a GitHub action um, that essentially uh, consists of creating a, a YAML file um, and this YAML file lives in uh, a .github uh, workflows and then uh, nodejs.yaml. So it lives in those directories. Those are special magical directories for uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, but, but it's essentially just this workflow, um, this, this YAML file that calls these actions that have been created by somebody else. Um, I chose actions that uh, allowed me to use Yarn. That is my um, interface of choice. Uh, if you want to use NPM, uh, it's a little bit easier, honestly. Um, but this is our YAML file that will run install and then run this script that I showed you. That's just a slightly more uh, strict version of the same linting rules that we have. Uh, so if we go back to the PR, what we have is a failure and it's required. Now, for that to be required, Essentially, I went into the settings, branches. Uh, we have some other requirements as far as the, it, you are required to have somebody review and approve your changes. Um, but I was able to select strict lint because that is the name I gave this job. So you can have a number of jobs run um, and require those tests to be passing uh, before you're able to merge. So. This is a workflow that I thought uh, was, was interesting and uh, people may uh, want to implement this or something similar themselves. Um, it's not groundbreaking, it's not magical, 
Um, I just think it's pretty neat. Uh, maybe you will too.